Well, Roy and I uh, had the pleasure of playing in Soccer Aid. Was that uh, 2010, oh, maybe? Was that? I can't remember. I can't okay. remember last yeah. week. I, so 20... <laughs> thinking about that homegrown core, Roy, I mean, you must have loved it um, back in 92 <laughs> when, when, when Gary and his mates came into the Manchester United dressing room. Well, we were doleful, honestly, when Gary came across. <laughs> <laughs> he won't last. <laughs> so, thanks, scores and gigs the rest of a chance. In conversations with me last season, the captain of the club made no secret of his wish for new faces to arrive, and now they're here, he knows they'll be judged once again on their European campaign. I think uh, our number one priority has got to be the European Cup because I think if we're challenging for the European Cup, I think the rest will fall into place. Um, and that's our aim. We've got to try and win that European Cup. Um, because we're always confident we can win our own Premier League and I'm not trying to ma make it sound as if I'm writing off the other teams. But if, as I said, if I think we've got the players to challenge for the European Cup, I think the rest will fall into place. And we've got a squad capable of doing that. Hopefully, again, you know, can avoid any injuries. And you said, with the manager last season, I really don't think that's an issue. I think the biggest lift we've had this summer um, is the two new signings and the fact that most of the players have signed long-term contracts. The gaffers agreed to stay um, at the end of the season. So everything's really, you know, looking good. We've got nothing to complain about, and uh, but hopefully that will continue. Um, again, it's easier said than done sitting here, it's going out and doing it on the pitch. Even in late July, everything seems to now be in place. Nearly £50 million spent, a smooth transformation in the backroom staff, and perhaps most crucially, the manager's confirmation he will remain at the club for another five years in an ambassadorial role. It was important that Gaffer obviously agreed to stay and uh, put an end to all the speculation. Um, Does that affect players? Does that, do uh, you... Not necessarily players, but well, I suppose something you could do without, you know what I mean? Um, as you said, towards the end of last season, they were making a bit of a field there about would he be even stay until the end of the last season. Ridiculous, you know, stuff in the papers. And with the fact the lads all signing new contracts, um, I think that was important. Again, just I think there's only Bex maybe left. He's got one or two years left. So hopefully Bex will be sorted out in the next few weeks because apparently talks are going quite well. So fingers crossed on that. And it just you know the lads do um, when they say you know they're so happy the club and they love the club and they generally mean it. You know what I mean? I think we've been fortunate with. The five or six lads coming through together, the hardcore, you know, and um, you know they've all signed five, six, seven year deals. I think Ollie's agreed a new deal, and it's just um, just shows how much the club means to him. I think that's important. It's how important it is to build up your fitness. Um, you can soon lose it, but you know, hopefully, as I said, we've had about four or five weeks off. It's not been too long, and um, within a couple of weeks, hopefully, we should have that bit back. But as you said, hopefully, then the, we need that bit of match uh, fitness. We've seen changes with Jim Ryan and Mike Phil now involved with the first team in, in different capacities. Um, what changes have you seen with their involvement now? Well, it's still our ideas because of the fact pre-season just involves a lot of running, you know, and travelling and, you know, the itinerary. Is a, there's a lot of pressure on the players regarding functions to do. Um, but there's plenty of training sessions and, of course, you know, we have a couple of games. But I think it's important regarding the new players to get to know the players and uh, the system, the way we play. And, um, you know, I think they'll be looking forward to it. You made them fairly quickly, to be honest. But again, it's early days, you know, and uh, it's just been a lot of running, so there's not been much time for talking because we're recovering after doing a bit of running. But no, they seem to have settled in pretty quickly. Obviously, Rude knew, knew if Yap anyway, and his English is quite good, and Wands, hopefully, his English will come on the next few weeks and months. But just by the first few training sessions, they look really good players, and that's the most important thing. And the games over there in the Far East, the fans over there are, of course, United crazy. And the games may even be like home games because of the number of United fans over there. Yeah, no doubt um, there's a lot of fans all over the world, especially in the Far East. So I think it's nice for the fans to get a chance to see the players. Uh, they wouldn't, they, the only chance they would get probably on the television. So from that point of view, it would be good for the fans. Are the players aware of just how big the global fan base is? Well, I think most of the players are, yeah, because um, you know we've been travelling every couple of years. We usually go in the Far East or Australia, wherever it might be. So yeah, I think most of the players will be aware. But you know, it would be an eye-opener for the new players. Beckham is behind it instead. Van Nistelrooy, Keane, Solskjaer, all inside that penalty area. Good header back across Solskjaer. Roy Keane's the one that gets it back across the goal and Ollie will be delighted. Ollie will be delighted, but that's been coming, Steve. They've been putting an awful lot of pressure on the Singapore team. Great. Van Nistelrooy, plenty of options. One of them is Beckham. Solskjaer to his right. Squares it instead for Philip Neville. Well, we don't see many from him. And we don't see very much emotion there. But he's regained the lead for United. Yep, stamp. 
played every minute in this tour so far. Beckham again into Van Nistelrooy, lovely knockdown. Solskjaer, he's kept it out again, has he? I don't know, he's given it. No, he's given the, the goal. Yep. He's given the goal for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. To be fair, second of the night, and United third. Well, you'll hear the cheer in Manchester, I promise you, if this goes in. It is Beckham, deflected. <laughs> there is the cheer. And there is the smile from David <laughs> Beckham. Not a trademark free kick. He needed the help of a deflection. Fortune. Can he deliver this time? Good header coming in from Mr. Roy. And York says thank you very much. All the strikers have scored on the tour now. Dwight York has deserved that one. And Mr. Roy. Good turn for the big fella. Trying to thread it through to York. Right, still comes to York. Takes a deflection. Dwight York will not mind that. There's a difference since we saw the game against Malaysia the other night as well. Listen to stuff. It's Fortune trying to get Van Nistelrooy for seven. And he does get seven. <laughs> he scored in successive matches. The United fans love that. And so too does, does Ruben Van Nistelrooy. You can bet your life for all the people that have scored the goal. He'll be thinking, surely somewhere along the way he gets one. And it shows you how popular he is with all the players around him. But he's did well. Chadwick has showed plenty of energy since coming on. York. Giggs. Bartes to his left. Fortune. Giggs. 8-1. Beautifully worked from Manchester United. And a real stylish goal to entertain a very satisfactory completion to the evening. Turan would have been another good addition at the back, I think. But uh, two out of three isn't bad. No, um, I think uh, the whole club needed a lift, you know, I think uh, the players. Um, last year I think we bought Fabian only, um, and as a goalkeeper it's obviously slightly different. And I think, um, as I said, uh, the players maybe needed a lift, um, the staff and definitely the fans, you know. Because um, as I said, we just came up short last year, I think we were very predictable in Europe. And uh, the teams are wary of that, you know, they, they knew how to play against us. But now with these two new signings, it gives us a few uh, more options.